The present and the future of aviation explained in Fly, in partnership with Eurocontrol. It's a normal day for the Brussels airline crew preparing for their first flight from Brussels to Helsinki, flight number SN2337. On average, at least 8,000 crews begin work across Europe. There's the required paperwork involved with a commercial flight and the security obligations prior to the boarding of the aircraft. This is the point of departure for a chain of events which will involve dozens of individuals completing various tasks. The first contact with the control tower sets in motion a number of complex procedures of which most passengers are completely oblivious. First of all, the controllers here receive what's called a clearance delivery call from the pilot. This first workstation then gives the pilot the final flight instructions. As we move off, we change frequency and another controller takes over the flight as it taxes to take off. This increases flight security. As the plane approaches the runway, we change to a third workstation. This is called air, and the controller gives the pilot permission to take the plane onto the runway and take off. A moment after takeoff, the plane quits the tower and moves on to another frequency where the flight is monitored by radar. As we follow the flight under radar control, we head for Maastricht in the Netherlands. It's here around 250 controllers are based in Europe's only multinational centre, one of the most advanced in the world. After the Helsinki-bound flight leaves Brussels, it's transferred from the control centre in Brussels to the control centre in Amsterdam, which automatically positions the plane at a certain altitude before being passed on to Maastricht. Maastricht then takes over the flight in the sector over the Netherlands, where it reaches cruising altitude. After Maastricht over the North Sea coast near the German and Danish border, it's taken over by the Danish control centre. Ensuite, il va le transférer au centre de contrôle danois. One of the advantages of the Eurocontrol Centre in Maastricht is that it manages the airspace over Luxembourg, Belgium, the Netherlands and Germany. It makes for a more efficient management of the airspace above 24,500 feet. It reduces delays and increases security. Multinational management is the future of air traffic control, and that is the task of Eurocontrol, the European organization charged with keeping the skies safe. There are around 73 control centers, 35 different control systems, and 16,500 controllers. In Europe, we see a 5% growth in traffic per year. In the United States, they cover around the same amount of airspace with only 18 centers, where we have 73, with twice as much traffic to handle, with a similar 4 or 5% increase per annum. What we see here is not a swarm of locusts, but an everyday picture of the activity above us on an average day. 30,000 flights, 5,000 aircraft flying between 600 airports, carrying millions of passengers, and it's growing. Experts predict that volume will double by 2020. Managing this ever-increasing traffic is a difficult business, with the prospect of dreaded delays never far away. In the past, these delays hurt the industry, as the Director-General of Eurocontrol explains. The matter of delays uh, were very critical in the 80s uh, and then in 90s. And that's why there were major efforts at the European level in order to address the, the delay situation. And here is where it comes, the, the notion of the flow management. Flow management uh, that we have here in, in Brussels, in Eurocontrol, is the single uh, operation that deals with flow management in Europe.
This is the man with the keys to the office where European air traffic flows are managed. This is where the flight plans of each plane are given the go-ahead or not, and where the departure slots are decided. Here, traffic flows are optimised in coordination with the national services and carriers. The idea is to spend more time waiting on the apron than extra time in the air. Here's a real example, a flight from London Gatwick to Athens on a busy day. There are traffic problems over northern France and southern Italy. The zones are marked in green and blue. Eurocontrol provides alternative routes, but there could be a problem with the destination where the number of scheduled flights overreach the capacity of the airport. We can see that Athens have told us that they can safely handle 30 flights per hour. That's this dotted line here. But there are some areas here between uh, 10 and 11 o'clock where there are more flights planned than what can be safely handled. And also here just before 2 o'clock in the afternoon there is 35 flights instead of the 30 which is the capacity. And around 10.30 there are 38 flights planned again compared with the capacity of 30. Now in order to avoid that we have a lot of flights circling over Athens airport waiting to land which can be potentially unsafe and which is also harming the environment. We've utilized the available capacity here later and there by issuing a departure slot with a small delay to all of these flights and you can see how we have smoothened out the traffic by doing that. So the next time you're stuck on a plane waiting to take off, you now know that a slight delay will avoid the need to fly in a holding pattern at the destination, which is bad for the environment. And that's what the central flow unit management do. They optimise air traffic flow. We manage to break the trend and reduce the delays by finding the capacity, finding the reroutes, finding the best flow management solutions, so that we came down to a level below two minutes in 2003 and we have managed to stay below two minutes average delay per flight in Europe during the last four years. The crew we saw leaving Brussels at the beginning have now returned. What do the pilots think of the changes in air traffic management? I began 10 years ago when we were still called Sabina. In Brussels we had lots of constraints on slots and everything, but now things have improved. We have more slots and it's more fluid. We still have lots of direct routes and things are a lot better. However, there's still room for improvement at the airports. Every flight begins and ends at an airport. They work in a highly competitive environment, but their contribution to safety and punctuality is vital and yet another factor in the smooth running of an ever-expanding industry.